And we're live for Real Estate Exposed. Phil Tarrant, Tom Panos, your co-host, traveling around Australia and globally. Tom Panos in New Zealand, just returned. How are you going? Very good. While we're talking about New Zealand, everyone listening here, please remember, if you go to New Zealand, you need a COVID test. That's in the last 24 hours before you travel. I had a flight at 9.30 yesterday, or sorry, the day before. Phil, stupidly, unprepared, traditionally Panos getting there one hour before on an international flight, dumb, but I've always got on. You always get on. You just go, if you got carry on. And um, Phil, you know, the line was, was full. Even the business line was full. And uh, the lady there said, uh, um, you haven't done a New Zealand declaration, number one. You've got here an hour before you should be here three hours. And she goes, and you don't have a uh, up-to-date COVID test of the last 24 hours. I was shocked. I was shocked I was even on the flight. I can't believe it. Thank God, Phil. John Peranchi, if you're out there from McGrath, who I think is in the RB top 100, I'm not sure, his mate, his best mate was working behind the desk at Qantas, recognised me, I told him the story, and they fast-tracked me to a PCR test, got on the plane. They weren't impressed, obviously, when you walk on the plane last, people are staring at you. Um, but, Phil, you need a COVID test, you need a New Zealand declaration, and when you're coming back to Australia, you need an Australian declaration. You can't just get on like it was the old days. Um, Mate, two, two lessons there, Tom. Uh, it's not what you know, it's who you know, point number one and point number two. You've got to actually do stuff to actually get the ground truth. And I, I hear you out in New Zealand, mate. Um, uh, you're a bit surprised by some of the changes to the way in which uh, um, property investors can can create wealth out there. Uh, can't claim uh, interest as a tax deduction anymore, mate. What's that got to do with the market? So agents getting jittery out there. I know things are changing. I've just had this morning a discussion with a Kiwi investor and um, you know he was saying, hey, things are changing. I reckon there's going to be some good buying opportunities coming up because you're going to get a significant softening of the market. Are we seeing similar things out there to what we're seeing in Australia? Oh, they're ahead of us in uh, in declines. They're ahead of us, Phil. They had their first interest rate increases in September and they've already gone up 1.5%. They're already telling them that they're going to go up even more. So they're on that upward cycle. The clearance rate is somewhere between 20 and 30%. Number of people going to open for inspections has dramatically reduced. Trying to put deals together is very hard. But in addition to that, Phil, what you said there at the start, which I was surprised, I still can't actually process it in my head, and I hope it doesn't ever happen in Australia. Negative gearing is out in New Zealand. As of, they announced it April 2021. It took effect in 2022, April. So, Phil, for those that are listening, just think about this concept. If you've got an investment property and your interest payment on that investment property is 30 grand a year, 40 grand a year. It's actually the biggest component of your cost. It's normally bigger than your water rates. It's bigger than everything. You cannot claim that as a tax deduction. I actually think that changes the total trajectory of an investor's plans. Like, I mean, I've, I don't know about Phil, you're a, you're a very big real estate investor. Would you still be buying investment property if Anthony Albanese? brought in, in two years' time, scrapping negative gearing. Would you still invest in property? Yes. Tell me why. Because there's something, the benefit of it, a lot of it is actually gets diminished with well, taking well, that Well, I think the, the first point, Tom, is um, negative gearing. Uh, a lot of people, and, and this is one of the, the, the challenges the Australian property has had over many years and, and it's not as prolific as what it is right now a lot of people used to stand up property spookers let's call them that saying your strategy your strategy should be a negative gearing strategy don't worry about how much it's it's going to cost and don't worry about how much it's out of pocket because it's all a tax deduction that should be your strategy let's be really really clear negative gearing is not a strategy when it comes to property investing negative gearing is a is a consequence of investing as a tax consequence of investing. And we can dig into this a lot more if you want, Tom. Um, would I still inv invest in uh, uh, rent, uh, in properties if negative hearing was there? Absolutely, I I'd be chasing, I'd just be chasing yielding assets. Um, and, and natural market dynamics, Tom, if you remove negative gearing from the Australian uh, property investing uh, landscape, 
a couple of things going to happen. Number one, you're going to have a lot less investors in the market. Let's be clear. What's that going to do? It means there's going to be less investment properties. What happens with that? A rapid increase in rents on investment properties. So if you are a property investor and there isn't negative gearing, you should get the reciprocal uplift on rents. And if rents go up, it means that your property is probably going to be less likely to be negatively geared. Um, that's just one point. The second point is think about all the social consequences if they scrap negative gearing. Um, Australian property investors in many ways are, are the, the, the providers of affordable housing for a lot of Australians. Uh, the Australian government, um, yes, they provide social housing, um, but there's a big cohort of Australians who are always going to be renting property and it's property investors that make those properties available. If they're not doing that, that means that falls on the shoulders of the government and you're going to have some significant, significant challenges uh, when it comes to social engineering, if that was the consequence of it. So I think if our Anthony Albanese was to, and the Labor Party were to form a government, he's been very clear he's not going to be touching this stuff. Um, and, and I can't see that turning over. They've tried to do it beforehand. It hasn't worked. The ramifications of it is so significant for Australia that if you, it would be a snowball, a snowball effect, and I don't know where it would land. So it's a really good experiment to see how that plays out uh, in uh, New Zealand, they've got a more of a, um, a social leaning government. Um, and I see there's probably a lot of pressure on that as um, a way in which to reduce the rampant price increases we've seen in the New Zealand market over the years. It's been out of control. The Auckland market, it's been nuts, Tom. And, you know, what were, what were you doing out in New Zealand anyway? Who are you working with? What's the real intel on the streets? Are, are agents walking around with their, with their chest puffed out now or are they sort of starting to slump a little bit in their chair and it's getting very hard for them? slumping in the chair and it's getting a little bit harder, Phil. And the reason why is they've had two amazing years and all of a sudden um, they're facing the following. Many vendors are not coming to the market because they feel like they're not going to get their price. Other vendors that are on the market are saying, why should I sell at this figure when only three months ago I could have got that figure? And, you know, we, we, we've got a generation of real estate agents, not only in uh, New Zealand and Australia as well, Phil, that have been working in an environment where there has not been upward pressure on interest rates. In fact, I don't have the exact number, Phil, but I would probably say that most of the industry in Australia and New Zealand have been working in real estate for less than 12 years. We had our first interest rate rise in 12 years the other day. So they are struggling with it. Um, but I've got to say, there are another group of agents, Phil, and... I look at them and I have conversations with them and they're seeing, you know, Rupert Murdoch used to have a great term, never waste a crisis. He was famous for that, never waste a crisis. So what's the opportunity in this crisis, Phil? Think about it. If you've got the ability to put deals together because you know the basic foundations of list, adjust, sell. If you know how to create urgency when there is no urgency, and that's what sales is all about, right? If you've got the ability to get results done where others aren't getting results, you're going to increase your fees, you're going to win market share, and in addition to that, this extra money you're making, Phil, it's a golden opportunity now to buy a bit of real estate. I, I, I want to encourage real estate agents, hey, if you haven't done it already, you've got this 18-month period where you probably will pay a little bit less than what you would have, Having said that, I'm still not convinced because I'm still seeing some good results out there, Phil. But the bottom line is you'll probably end up buying something at about 5 10 15% discount than the height of the boom. So there are real estate agents that can look at this as a gift that's been badly wrapped and that can improve their net wealth, they can grow their market share, and they can set themselves up and their families. And I'm hoping that is the way smart people that listen to us, Phil, choose to view the next 18 months, two years. Who knows? Yeah. Mate, I, I completely subscribe to what you're saying uh, there, Tom. Um, uh, real estate markets move. You've seen many markets. You've seen more markets than me, but I've been around long enough now to have experienced a few of them. And um, uh, in every market, there is opportunities. And let me tell you what, in this this sort of softening cycle that we're going through right now, there'll be huge opportunities for, for wealth creation. What I'm doing, uh, what what I know a lot of I like to think smart investors are doing right now, bank valuations are still stacking up on on properties. Um, and if you have an investment property or if you have an owner occupied property, let, let me tell you, you've probably got a fair bit of equity in there. 
and equity being the difference between the value of the property and the debt that's against it. So that equity can be extracted uh, and you can use that to either propel you into a new property, a new investment property or some other type of investing. So speak to your mortgage broker as a first point of call, get a hold of them and say, can you review my loans as it sits right now? Get your, get your, um, get your properties valued up, see what equity you have and get that equity liquid. And what that means is doing... I'm doing, as you're talking, I just put it into my Asana task list. I'm going to, I've got to organise a time to meet with my broker. Mm. And the, re- the reason broker, is- If you don't have one, Tom, the good people at finney.com.au will help you out. They're good mortgage brokers. That's who I'm using. Give them a little plug. But um, speak to your mortgage broker. Um, uh, make that equity liquid. So refinance the property and that money that you extract from it, put it in an offset account and leave it there, offsetting the debt. So essentially you should be net net until you do something with that money and then wait to those market opportunities start to present themselves. You don't need to rush. It's there's time is on your side. Um, we'll see this market um, go through a, a couple of blips um, uh, over this period of time. We have the election next Saturday, Tom. Uh, we've still got those things that we've been chatting about impacting um, uh, the global economy, the domestic, domestic economy in terms of inflation and some of the challenges um, uh, in Europe at the moment, the higher cost of living. Let these things normalise a little bit and then get ready to strike. But first step, get finance ready, get yourself sorted out, real estate agents and, and mortgage brokers, because uh, it's going to be a good period if you are generating income and you have good serviceability and you can show to the bank that you are a good borrower. There's going to be some opportunities there. But Tom, speaking of success in real estate, the top 100 agents, the who's who, the zoo, it's your favourite list of the year. We've got the numbers. They're out. They're available on realestatebusiness.com.au. Have you downloaded it yet? Have you had a look around? Oh, listen, Phil, I've got to tell you, I, it's, it's, it's a document that I'm always... I, what happens with me, I'm always chasing the document. I'm always chasing the document. And I always go through the same process. You do have to log in and um, hand your details over, and then it's sent out to you. So, and, then, and it's normally done on the, on, the, on the spot, right? So I haven't yeah, got yeah, a copy of it yet, but... But between so- social media and text messages to me, I've got a pretty good idea of who won awards. They're very proud. I get, they're very proud. The winners are very proud. They send me, you know, a snapshot of what they come and they give me a very short summary of, you know, why they're so happy with it. And I'm, and I'm proud for them as well, you know. But, Phil, if you've got the list there, I'd love to know. Like, this got announced on the 5th of May, right? So is that right? Yep, yep. So last week. Okay, so let's 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 if you don't mind go through some of the names of, of winners. This no, is the other, by the way, everyone. REB top one hundred, right? The REB top one hundred, not the the ones by state. This is the national. This is the national one. How do you want to do this, Tom? Because I, I get the data really good. I got a nice spreadsheet that I can sort and and, and do whatever I want to. Um, uh, do you maybe want the top go, ten? Maybe just go through the top top. Maybe just run through some of the top twenty names there. Okay, let me let me go. Who you may know? I'm going to start at twenty. Michael Murphy, Bell Property, Stratfield. Wow! Uh, Ten years in the industry. Wow! Michael Murphy. That yep. shocks me. Surprises me. Well done, Michael Murphy. He must have he must have just entered the list. There's no way he's been there before. Am I right? Or you can't tell off that document? Uh, Ten years in the industry. Two sports staff. Average days on market forty three. One hundred listing secures. Sold one hundred forty one. So a hangover, obviously, from the year prior. Total value sold 259 uh, or 260 million, Tom. Average sale price 1.8 million. Um, yeah, but, it, but Phil, is it, is it the first time he's entered? Does it show? I, I don't have those time? numbers here. But, okay. but I think that would be in the um, in the actual big document and everyone can go and have a look at that. But his, his name, it's a reason why I've, I haven't seen it there before. So, Well, Michael um, Murphy, well done. He works for I, – I, I train that office – Every Monday morning, sorry, every fortnight, Mondays, nine o'clock, it's called Bell Strathfield Concord, and Michael Murphy's in that team. And um, I'm so happy and so proud of the guy because he's one of he's one of these guys. If it was a football team, he never would get player of the round. He'd never be written about. He just goes and he just chips away, chips away, chips away. And look at that, mate. Well done. Any other names? Well- well, that same office, Tom, number nine, the jump up, Norman So Bell Property Stratfield, number nine. Yeah, well, he's a he's a regular. He's not a he's not a surprise. He's a regular. Norman So, yeah. congratulations. 
Um, uh, uh, let's I have a look. Like Matthew, it. Matthew, number 18, Matthew Every, Everingham, Richard's Matthews Real Estate, Inner and Southwest Sydney. Uh, direct competitors, direct competitors to the office that you just spoke about. Um, yeah. Richard Matthews, direct competitors. They actually spoke at the REB Innovation. That's where I last saw him. And he's a very close friend of mine. And he's also a close client of mine, long term, 25 years with Richard, with uh, with uh, Matthew Everingham. Um, yeah. Next, keep going. Yeah. And, and by the way, um, 1.7 million is his average pr property. So to your point, 1.7. So very similar to the other, 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 um, uh, that area of three. Uh, let's go up. Um, Michael Michael Dowling, McGrath Real Estate Ride. Well, ex, -ex Num McGrath. number fifteen. Yeah, he's a, he's he's uh, he's uh, he's a great agent. He worked for McGrath's. He's actually uh, gone out with uh, a couple of others on a on a new business called Pello um, that's uh, launched. But Michael Dowling is an is an outstanding real estate operator, and I didn't know he actually played uh, professional soccer. In England before re, uh, before real estate. Okay, there's a nice vignette. Uh, number fourteen, Helen Yan, Ray White, uh, Baldwin, Baldwin North. Tom, three hundred twenty six million total sales, two point five million average sale price. Um, two hundred two listings secured, one hundred twenty eight sales. So I was talking to Helen Yan yesterday, and um, she's actually speaking at Eric, and she's been a long term client, gym member, one on one client. Helen Yang, listen to this story. Phil, Helen Yang built her real estate business on basically just serving a community on non-real estate issues. So when she came to Australia and there was a strong Chinese community in Melbourne, they needed to have simple things like how do you fill out a Medicare application form? How do you do this? So she became the go-to person, the translator. She would actually go off and you know help people sort of settle in. Next thing you know is, you know what it's like? When people like and trust you, um, then you become a magnet for for their business, and it's a it's a great. She's actually speaking at Eric. Um, it's a great, great, great learning, and she's she's always in the women. She's always there, like number one or number two. Um, English is a um, is not her first language. Um, so when you hear her speak at Eric, for those that are going there, you'll see um, that look. If you're hungry enough, if you're good enough, you'll make it in real estate. Helen Yan, amazing. Yeah, number 13, uh, uh, you know, Mel, Matt Steinway, McGrath Estate Agents, Wombrill and McMaster's Beach, 330 million, Tom, 2 million uh, in, in average sales, uh, 187 uh, listings, 162 sales. He's always up there. Yeah, how many, can you tell how many years? Like this guy's, we're talking through 20, 25 years, 25 20. years in industry, five support staff, average days on market up there, Tom, 39. Okay. So, yeah, uh, um, form, yeah great. Yeah. Form is temporary, class is permanent personal long-term friend of mine, actually one of my closest mates, and he's done he's done well. He has, he has told me the Central, he's told me that um, Central Coast has been challenging of, of late, but he's, he's he's winning market share. Keep going. Okay, uh, let's let's stick with the girls because it's uh, we've got an impressive yes. lineup here, Tom. Uh, number 11, Vivian Yap, Ray White, uh, Dale Keith, uh, 335 million, Tom, in sales. In contention to be the number one, so there's a few people there. You got to test mate, them. The, mate, the, girl, mate, really the girls, the girls are doing good. We're seeing a lot more of the ladies coming into the rankings, Tom. Yeah, well, listen, they're likable. They're good on the soft skills. Sometimes they underestimate how good they are. It doesn't surprise me. But she's a tiger. She is relentless. She just won't let go. She was a pharmacist, by the way, Phil. Left pharmacy got into real estate, um, and she works in the prestige area. For those that don't know that area, let's call it Double Bay of Perth, uh, actually probably Point Piper of Perth. And um, she's extraordinary, you know. She has chopped around a few of the brands. She was with a number of brands. She's now with Ray White. And, um, yeah, well done, Vivian Yap. Yep. Um, Jennifer Carr, number 10, Tom. Lewis Carr Real Estate, West Pennant Hills, uh, New South Wales. 334 million in sales, 155 listings, 150 sales. Pretty good going. Extraordinary person as well. Extraordinary person as well. And um, I became very close to her over the last five years because her son, who works in the business there, got diagnosed with cancer. And um, we just became phone buddies. Um, he has recovered. Um, and um, she's an extraordinary operator. She's one of these people, but Phil, 
You, she will not get interviewed. She will not go on stage. She just she said no to every opportunity. She just mm. likes to sit behind. Mate, each each their own. Um, uh, number seven, Tom, uh, the highest uh, ranked female in the RAB top one hundred agents for twenty twenty two was uh, Susan Hibbard from uh, Abode Property Agents in Sutherland Shire and, and St George area. Tom, four hundred and three million in sales, average sales price about two million bucks. 283 listings, 206 sales for the year. That's that's very good going. Well, I've got to I've got to go. I've got to find out who this person is. I've, I mean, I'm embarrassed to actually tell you that um, I wasn't aware of where she worked. But that is an extraordinary effort. Um, extraordinary yeah. effort. Um, amazing. Um, you got an average price there? Yeah, uh, yeah average price 100 and uh, 1.956 million dollars, which is about right for that area. Um, and, and, uh, and let's Phil, go before, we, sake. before we finish off, you just go quickly through because as you, you we're, we're mindful of. Um, okay, uh, top five, Tom. Top five uh, from five to one: David Walker, Ray White, Rurunga. Number four: David Highland, Highland, Sutherland Shire, Eastern Suburbs. Number three: uh, McClay Longhurst from Bresick, Whitney, yeah. Paddington. Number two: Michael Clark, Clark and Hummel, Manly Northern Beaches. Probably seen him on Lux listings. And number one, still there. Uh, the, the king, uh, number one, is Alex Alexander Phillips, uh, PPD Real Estate, Eastern Suburbs of Sydney. Tom, total value of property sold, $1,072,000. Unbelievable. Form is temporary, Four. class is permanent. He keeps doing it. Over, he's got an incredible work ethic, incredible work ethic, speaks to more people. He's in total momentum, um, and congratulations to him. And um, congratulations also to everyone that we didn't mention, Phil, because there's, you know, like if you think about it, to get the REB top 100, you are basically in the top percentile of our industry. I mean, I don't know what the exact number is now, 50, 60,000 real estate agents in Australia. But if you think about it, you get 100 of those people and you put that as a percentage, right, you end up realising we've got the creme de la creme. This is the smart brigade this is the best of the best this is uh, the academy awards right yeah. um so phil well, well, well done. tom just to that before we sign off to give some sense to all our real estate agents and i know a lot of them when they sit there at the start of the financial year and put out their business plan we see it all the time it'll be make the reb top 100 agents the entry tom number 100 uh braddon uh walters um uh bell property lennox head up the coast there Entrance one hundred and fifty three million dollars in sales, Tom. Average sales price one million bucks. One hundred and fifty properties sold, one hundred and seventy seven listings. He's been in the game for eighteen years, so that's the entry. Okay, that's the benchmark. Phil Tarrant, thank you so much. We'll see everyone next week. We might even look at this time. It's had great engagement this morning. Nice one. See you, Tom. Thank you, Phil.